Hello, my name is Michael West. On August 2nd, 2019, those of us in the field of aging research lost a dear friend and colleague, Dr. Woody Wright, a professor at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center at Dallas. Woody was a pioneer in multiple areas of research, most notably perhaps his work in cellular aging and the role of telomeres as clocks of cell aging uh, in the DNA of human cells. Some years earlier, in May 16 of 2014, I was sitting at a meeting with uh, Woody and our colleagues discussing the role of molecular mechanisms of aging, Woody being an advocate of the telomere hypothesis of cell aging, and the objection was brought up that um, telomeres must have nothing to do with aging. After all, mice have very long telomeres, therefore you'd predict long cell lifespans, whereas humans have quite short telomeres, uh, and so telomeres cannot be a clock of cell aging. This is a common uh, criticism of the telomere hypothesis. Woody uh, asked for permission to show a few slides and to uh, lay out his thought on the evolution and the comparative biology of aging in mammals. Woody w fought cancer for over 13 years and because I knew that Woody might not be with us much longer, I pulled out my uh, iPhone and captured his voice walking us through that slide presentation. And so in memory of Woody and the loss of such a bright and great light, uh, such a great mind in the field of aging research, I put together that voice with that slide presentation so that you can uh, join with us in seeing uh, his presentation and remember a bit of what was Woody Wright. So, I can't read anything on this slide, but I want you to appreciate that there's big black areas and big pink areas. And uh, to blow it up a little bit to show you what we're talking about, black means basically human-like and pink is basically mouse-like. And what I'm going to try and take you through is to answer the question, why do humans live 80 years and mice live for two years? Uh, across the whole mammalian radiation. So uh, just to show you the quality of the data and what we're looking at, we're going to compare these two adjacent species, the spider hyena and the tiger, and we're going to look at killing your length, telomerase, whether the cells stop growing in culture because of the stresses of the culture environment, and uh, some other things that all develop a little bit. So if you take a look at these cute little fuzzy little animals, uh, you can see that uh, what you're looking at here is a telomere length lot, and uh, their telomeres are short and human-like, and they shorten as a function of passage level in culture. This is the trap ladder indicating you control tumor cells, that there's lots of telomerase activity, and you see these guys do not express any uh, telomerase activity and you can see that they can be directly immortalized by putting in telomerase. Uh, in contrast, the tigers here, the telomeres are absolutely huge. This is limited mobility so that they're actually more like uh, you know, 100, 150 kilobases long as opposed to the uh, 10 kilobases of human telomeres. Uh, they are expressing telomerase activity uh, they don't grow in culture, they uh, immediately stop dividing because they're very sensitive to the cult, uh, culture conditions. But if you put in uh, a viral antigen called T antigen, which blocks the checkpoint activities, uh, the cells can take off and you know, basically be immortal uh, because their telomeres are so long that uh, they've got telomerase. There's nothing to keep them from dividing. Uh, if you do a phylogenetic generalized least squares framework analysis, which is a statistical uh, tool that uh, Mark Miller and Chris Vendetti uh, have developed, which uh, separates proximity on a phylogenetic tree from real differences and indicates you know, underlying real causal effects. And you're in mathematics so far beyond me, and so I'm 
relying on them for it. Uh, on the one hand, here you see the obvious uh, general fact that if you're uh, big, you've got to have a longer lifespan because you're not going to invest a lot in building a uh, big house if you're going to be going, uh, moving on the next day. Uh, but according to their analysis, it's completely independent variables uh, that uh, as you get bigger, your probability of repressing polymerase during development uh, goes way, way, way up. It's highly significant. And similarly, uh, if you want to live a long time as a completely independent variable, you better have short, human-like, well-regulated uh, telomeres that uh, shorten uh, with progressive cell divisions. Now, we know from lots of biology experiments that cell division is the most important driver of mutations. And uh, that leads to the hypothesis that replicative aging which you know, is the program, repression of telomerase, and telomere shortened as an anti-tumor mechanism, uh, might represent the initial adaptation to the increased body temperature of endothermy. Because we also know that at higher temperatures, there are deaminations of thymidine residues and lots of mutations and things that occur because of the elevated body temperature. So uh, with that as a background, there are at least five to seven times marked by these red dots where there were transitions between repressing telomerase and having short telomeres uh, to not repressing telomerase. And uh, the, that's a one-way transition so that there are no examples at all of uh, transition back the other direction from express to repress. And there are one-way transitions throughout mammalian history. Uh, the fact that there are multiple events suggests that there's some sort of trade-off and advantage to be gained by some of these animals by abandoning replicative aging and uh, not repressing tolerance. And one of the situations where it's easy to see why this can occur is if you are a long-lived animal and you have lots of tumor protection mechanisms in addition to replicative senescence and tumor or shortening. So you've got to have good DNA repair, you've got to get, have good protection against the induction of DNA damage, not only the ability to detect the damage and repress it. You've got to have you know, good immune surveillance in order to be able to kill off any tumors. So if you have lots of sufficient uh, tumor protection mechanisms for a long life, and you now have a very short life, those mechanisms may be more than sufficient to prevent the development of cancer during your very short lifespan. So you no longer need telomere shortening uh, as part of your repertoire of tumor protection mechanisms. And so if there are advantages towards abandoning it, if there's a trade-off, you say to hell with telomeres. Let me get my, make my telomeres 150 kilobases long and let me express telomerase because I don't need that system in my short-lived niche. Then there's other uh, particular uh, situations which would also be involved. So for example, if you are an arboreal animal, if you fly like bats do, uh, it doesn't do you much good. Uh, you can't contribute to the well-being of your offspring by remembering that there was a tsunami and that when there's an earth, you know, when the water goes out, you better go to higher ground. Uh, if you can no longer fly and you're on the ground and you're going to be eaten the next day because you have no protection uh, against uh, all those predators. So there are also other niches uh, like the bats over here, where they don't uh, use replicative aging because it's incompatible with uh, the ability, you know, the, the all or none nature of a flying lifestyle. So, 
what are you know, some of these trade-offs? Uh, we know that oxidation protection, is, you know, oxidative damage is a major source of damage uh, to telomeres. Uh, and if you develop very, very long telomeres, so it didn't matter if you damaged them and uh, whacked off a big piece, or if you're expressing telomerase, so it doesn't even matter if you whack off a big piece, you got it, so you can build the telomeres back up, then you might be able to invest a whole lot less in protecting your telomeres so that they can actually effectively count cell divisions and shorten uh, and so forth. And so if you look at the oxidative resistance of these different species, what you find is that there is a very large group of long-lived animals uh, that have very high levels of oxidative damage protection in order to protect their telomeres that form a distinct group that's separate from uh, a lot of the animals that have abandoned replicative aging and uh, developed these very long telomeres. And so, uh, in addition to this just general trend that you would expect that the longer lived you are, the more you have to uh, be able to protect uh, your whole body, not just telomeres from damage, and so it's not unexpected that you have better oxidation protection mechanisms. Specifically, uh, you have this uh, long-lived group, uh, including us, where we have very high oxidation protection mechanisms. And so the bottom line in this is that as completely independent variables uh, in terms of lifespan, uh, that if you want to be big, you need to repress telomerase. And if you want to be long-lived, you need to have short, well-regulated telomeres that can cancel divisions and give you this extra added protection against the onset of cancer. And then all these are going to be responding to the ecological niche uh, in which you're occupied, in which you're occupying, and uh, you know, if there's high rates of predation, and there's, uh, you're likely to be dead in two months, you're going to you know, invest a lot in reproduction and not in protecting your telomeres and you're going to abandon that. Okay. okay. Question? That answer your question, Jeff, about mice versus man. So, no. let me get the mic. Ah. <laughs>